please don't wake me from this Legends, LGG Alden here. Today I'm back with episode five and a half of our Game Maker Studios top down game development series thing we're doing here. So, this time we're going to be working on enemy projectiles. So, basically, last episode, how we were working on making the player shoot, now we will make it so that the enemies can shoot back at the player. Now, we were going to put this in last episode, but if you watched the last one, I said that it probably would have been way too long to put it in that. So, this is like a separate episode, sort of in between. Next time, we'll probably be working on more menu stuff, such as like buttons and taking input and a lot of things like that. But for now, let's get into some enemy projectiles. So for this guys, I'm going to use the same sprite that I did for the bullet for the player. It's going to be the same thing, just the enemy will be shooting it. We're not going to make a separate one. You can if you want, feel free to because you can just set it in the actual object. But to start this off, the way we're actually going to do it is we're going to create a separate script. Now if you see, we already have a towards player movement script. Now the reason it's that, this one will actually make the player go directly up to or the enemy go up to the player. Now what we want is if it's shooting, you don't want it to be directly next to it. You want it to be from a little bit of a distance so that you can see it stand in there. When it gets close, it stops and it starts shooting at you. That's how you want it to work. So what you're going to do is you can actually duplicate the towards player script, except you can name it instead of towards player, you can just name it near player so that, you know, that's pretty much the gist of what we're making here is a script so that it goes close to the player, but not directly on the player so what we're actually gonna have to do in this is we're gonna have to check if the distance to the player is less than a certain amount which we can make that like a range so we could actually if we wanted to go into the enemy and you can go into the create a, the create event and do a range so I'm just gonna name it RNG and you can set it to whatever you want I'd say a good number is maybe 20 ish somewhere around there not really a bad number to go with so if you set the range to 20 you're okay for the create event but back to the actual script what you're going to want to do is after you run so after all of the stuff that's before because this will work this will make it move towards the player we need to do if and then you're going to do this is where we're going to actually calculate the distance and see if it's close enough that it's to the range so what we're going to check is we're going to do if and then we're going to say distance underscore towards or to object and then we're going to do obj player so if distance to the player is less than and then we're going to say range so rng because all enemies will have a range whether or not they're a distance enemy or not they will have some sort of a range so we can actually we might have to actually create a separate enemy but for now it doesn't really matter it'll be fine and then so there so it does distance to object and then object player is less than range then what it's going to do is it's going to actually do path underscore and then i believe it's end yes so path end which means it's not going to move but at the same time as you can see the script above starts it so it's just going to cancel out the action if you're close enough to there if not then you'll be able to move and go around and it'll continue to follow you until it gets close enough now you're going to want to duplicate the enemy so we can have a second enemy now you can name this whatever you want i'm just going to name it enemy and then we'll say shoot because this one will actually shoot at you instead of it just being a normal enemy i'll keep the sprite the same like i said you can make as many sprites and change it up as much as you want however you feel like going about it this one i'm just going to keep it simple and keep it exactly the same now copying it will mean that it already has all the basic features and different things like that and it can get hit by the bullet and things but what we actually need is now if you guys remember back when we created the player shooting we needed variables to keep track of fire rate sort of so we're gonna go if you see in the player which i'll go into the create event you'll see we have like an attack count and a can fire now if you want to just copy that you can and you could also have like actually you can copy like all three of these so that you have like the attack rate except you don't want it to be global so we can just make it attack rate and then attack count and can fire so this will have the same as the player does now those are three variables that you're going to need to keep track of so that when it comes to shooting it but what you need to do is go into the step event now the movement so the movement isn't towards player for this one we actually want it to be the near player and it'll already take the range so the range doesn't matter on the other enemy the other enemy doesn't use a range variable anywhere 
but this one does. So this one will actually keep track of that range now. You could even get rid of it in the other object enemy. I just put it there. I don't know why. It just kind of was there. So it's already in our shoot enemy. But if you want to get rid of it in the normal one, feel free to. It won't affect anything because there is no range for them to attack from. They just attack when they're touching the player. So now what you're going to want to do is we're kind of using the same system, almost very identical to how the player shoots. Go ahead and copy or duplicate the shoot and reload methods. Now you can name them like um, SCR enemy shoot and then SCR enemy reload just so that it's, you know, it's different. It doesn't have the same name. And then when we actually create the bullet, we'll do OBJ bullet and then just name it enemy bullet for now. And we can get a lot more in depth with this. But for now, we're just going to stick to the very basics for this series one that we're in. And then eventually in the future, we will get a lot more advanced. We can get new bullet types, all these crazy awesome things. But for now, we're keeping it simple. So we're just going to have one bullet that the enemy can shoot. And it also does have the same variables, which means like the can fire and all that. That works perfect. And like I said as well, duplicate the reload. Make sure to give it a little bit of a different name. So like I said, you could just add the word enemy in there, however you want to go about it. And then attack rate, make sure to get rid of the global word because this one doesn't have a global attack rate. It's just attack rate. So those two scripts will work fine. You can go back into the enemy shoot and you can actually run these scripts. So I I believe the way we did it in the player actually let me check quickly is yes okay so I got this so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna do in the step event we're gonna do actually we can run both we can run the reload and we can also run the shoot so one line of code that we actually need to do in here before we can just throw the reload or the uh, shooting script in there go into the near player and you're gonna check the same thing that you checked to see if the path should end so go back into the step event and what you're gonna do is you're gonna check if the distance, so you're just calculating the exact same thing again, but what you're then you're going to run is you're going to run the shoot, so make sure it's enemy, and then shoot. Also, one thing that I just noticed I didn't do here, I didn't use the enemy script, I used the normal one. So yeah, so now if the distance is good enough, it will shoot, and also no matter what, it will reload. So that's how we want it to work, and it should work good. So now we actually got to create the bullet. Now you can duplicate this bullet because it'll be very similar to the other one. And then just name it enemy bullet or whatever you named it. Like how mine was. Mine was OBJ enemy bullet. I'm keeping the same sprite. You can change it if you want. However you feel like going about it. Now instead of global speed plus one. That's debatable. However we want to do it. It doesn't really matter. One thing we could do is we could set it up so that. Well no we'll just. Okay what we'll actually do is we'll keep it at. The player speed plus one. We'll keep it at the same thing. It doesn't matter. We we could go in depth with it a little bit more, but it might make it a little more complex. And yeah, we'll keep it simple. So for now, it'll be like that. Keep the range at whatever you want it to be and the direction. This is where we actually need it to be different. So it will be at the X and Y, but instead of going towards where the mouse is, we want it to be player, the object player X and the object player Y. So just call to the object and put dot X and dot Y. That'll call to it and make it so that when it shoots, it points in that direction and moves that way. And then the step event should work fine so that it's pretty much running the same thing. It's counting, checking, and if it's too much, it goes away. Now, the last thing we need to do before we can actually test it is go into the player and we can add in a collision event with the enemy bullet. And then we can just do, we don't have to do a script for it. We could do a script, but... It should be fine. Now, I believe we just used HTLH. Yeah, global.htlh. So if we do that, we can just do, um, what's it called? We can do global.htlh minus equals. And then I don't know if we actually, the way we set this up might not work. I mean, we don't have a damage variable in here yet. So we could just set it to like one. It doesn't matter. Like I said, later we can go in more in depth where you have like different, like, damages and ranges and all that based on every bullet being separate so it created all unique instead of everything being one single like type and it's all the same so then the other thing you need to do is you need to make sure that the bullet goes away when it hits it so you want to do with and then you're going to sue other so this is checking oh well what's the other thing that is collided into and that would be the bullet and then it says with other and then do instance and destroy it so the same way that you always would just like that. 
So check it, destroy it. So after it minuses from your health, it will destroy it. So now we actually have the health moving around a little bit, which makes it kind of cool. And I believe we didn't add anything for a death sequence, so we'll go negative, but that's okay. Now we can try this out and see what happens. So two things that I messed up, guys. One, actually, you have to put the enemy in there or else you won't see it. It won't do anything, especially because all of mine look the same. But I have one right here just so we could test it out. And the other thing that I did wrong is I named my bullet wrong. So if you were copying all of this as perfect as I was or identical to me, you'll notice that something went wrong if you tested it. So I named mine bullet and then enemy at the end, not before. So that's, like I said when I explained it, make sure you name it identical or else it won't work so now we can run it and we can see if it works which I believe it should there shouldn't be errors and all that except there we go again so let's see how we can fix this so this is the health doesn't know what the health is oh that's probably because I might have named it something didn't I HLTH now let's see where did we go wrong here global HLTH okay so yeah like I said it's all about spelling Coding, if you spell anything wrong, it won't work. So make sure that you have it identical as can be. There you go. As you can see, it's shooting at us, which it, actually it's like completely destroying us. And now it goes to negative, which is exactly what I expected. But yeah, so you can mess around with it. Like I said, you could change the attack rate. You can change the range. But as you can see, it goes and it hits us. So if he was to shoot and I was to avoid it, but then go back, it doesn't matter. Pretty much that's perfect it shoots and you can change up the sprites so you can keep track of the enemies better however you want to go about it it works that's pretty much all that matters and i think we're good here so that's it guys for this episode five and a half i don't know if this one was very long it might actually have just been as long as the last one because like i said it's a it's an in-depth concept and it's not an easy thing to do it takes just as much work as making the player shoot so yeah now that we have that that's great we've got that one out of the way the next thing like i said we will be working on is a little bit more with a menu because we actually don't have anything for a menu yet so we can make it where there's buttons like play buttons um settings screens you could change all of that and we won't go crazy in depth with it but more like we're going to just create it and have basic buttons and a lot of stuff like that. So more control over the game and initializing. So you'll see in the next episode what I mean exactly. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this and hopefully it did help you. If you run into any issues, guys, comment them below so I can help you. I can do my best and help with any errors. Just paste the code, error, whatever thing. I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to be a legend and I will see you guys next time.